Good afternoon and happy Sunday from Burr Gymnasium. I'm Xavier Weary along with Tykira Carter. This is the back end of a home-and-home two-day series, which now includes your 1-4 Coppin State Lady Eagles and the 6-2 and two Howard Bison. Howard defeated Coppin State yesterday 60-52, to and if you missed the game, it was a performance where the Bison didn't get off to the best of starts, but in the second half, Howard really amped up their defensive intensity set by the junior, Krishlin Marsh. Takira, she ended up with nine crucial rebounds, four blocks, and two steals. Not stacking up gaudy numbers in the points column, but instead providing the spark that was necessary to mount a second-half comeback. Crystal March came in the game, and she absolutely dominated for the Bison. It was her defensive presence, Xavier, that helped out a lot, and that veteran leadership that she brought to the floor. So I felt like Crystal March, she, she provided a much-needed spark off of the bench. Absolutely, and it was that third quarter that really turned things around. You know, Howard held Coppin State to under 19% shooting and 14% from three. And in the fourth quarter, it became even more of a nightmare for Coppin State. They only shot 11%. So, you know, um, down the stretch, the energizer, Gia Thorpe, really, really set the tone. Definitely, and that's what Gia Thorpe does. She, she comes into the game in, in this role now where she's coming off the bench since she was injured the first few games of the season for the Bison, but she comes in the game and she provides that spark, much like Chris Marsh did yesterday. So, as I said before, we love the depth that Howard has and how they get to continue to throw different bodies in the game. Yeah, and Coach Grace talked about that yesterday. She was really, really excited about seeing all of those different bodies on the basketball court. You know, it really forces teams to continuously make different adjustments, and it just leaves the team uncomfortable. So kudos to Howard for being able to have those bodies to throw out there. And as we get set for the game, let's give you the starting lineups for Howard. It's going to be Kaya Creek, Ayanna Warren, Anjane Hutton, Jayla Thornton, and Brooklyn Fort Davis. And for Coppin State, we're going to have Hope Evans, Alexandria Hamilton, Ty, what do you look to see in the second game of a back-to-back? In the second game of a back-to-back, I just would like to see the energy to continue to be the same. Both of these squads, they fought real hard yesterday. And sure, some legs and stuff are going to be dead out there. But if the energy is there and they provide that own spark for themselves. And Kaya Creek starting it up again for the Bison. She did the same thing yesterday when Coppin State came out in that zone. But, yeah, yeah Xavier, just exquisite energy on both sides. Exquisite energy indeed. Kaya Creek started out the ball game yesterday to your point with a nice three, and she does it again today. Maybe a sign of good things to come for Howard. And one thing we see from Howard again in that matchup zone, sort of trying to cause some chaos on the defensive end. And Rebecca Wilson called a turn over here. So here comes Ayanna Warren. As mentioned yesterday, she really stepped up her play in conference play. Zayla Thornton mishandles the pass, and here comes Hamilton. Evans now at the controls. Weiss lost the leading score for Coppin State. Hamilton had a really good game yesterday. Takes it on a nice drive inside. Won't go. She gets on rebound. Kicks it. Weiss for three. Won't go. Rebound for Davis. If you're Coppin State, you can't ask for a better possession. Everybody got a touch. The ball was moving. Uh, there was movement on the floor. Really loved that possession by Coppin State. Coppin State doing a good job of keeping everyone engaged on that possession there. Coach Grace barks out of play. And Diana Warren. Shot clock down to four. She's got to make a move. She does a strong attack. Won't go. Here comes Evans. Swings it over Lawson. Dribble handoff to Weiss. Back to Evans. Howard did a really good job yesterday by locking in on the defensive end. A little bit of a mistake there by Warren, but it pays off in their favor. As Evans blew the layup. And we talked about the layups yesterday, Tyke. A lot of missed layups for Evans, so we'll see if that's something she can kind of turn around early on in this one. Absolutely. And, and a place where the Bison dominated 
over Coppin State yesterday was the paint points. They've only had Coppin State only had eight points in the paint compared to Howard University's 26. So if they can connect on some of these layups, we'll see Coppin State in a good place in this game. And that's the way to go if you're Ayanna Warren. Try to get the best player for Coppin State, which is Lawson. Get her in some foul trouble earlier on. Have. They didn't play their best ball. First free throw is good for Warren. That's typically this is typically a second half team, and they scored their most points in the fourth quarter. Yesterday, however, they scored the most points in the third quarter. They had 21 in the third. Yes, yeah, definitely. It was definitely a tale of two halves. Second free throw. Here's Howard applying that press. Nice beat inside. Hamilton set the plate up for Wilson as she had an easy lay-in. So points in the paint, a point of emphasis. you got to think for Coppin State. And turnovers, a point of emphasis for Howard. And Absolutely. that's not a possession that Coach Grace likes, I'm sure. Absolutely. And an unforced turnover at that. Ayanna Warren just trying to get the ball to Jayla Thornton going downhill. We'll discuss later on in the broadcast about what Coach Grace felt about their turnovers. She was pleased to see the number cut down so I'm sure she's not happy with that play there Hamilton being aggressive early nice left hand scoop and score from Alexandria Hamilton 6 to 5 Coppin State with the early lead this is a team that's not going to go away despite their 1 and 4 record Warren, the mid-range jump shot, won't go as they battle for it. Loose ball. It's going to go to Coppin State. Jalinda Sally's checking in. And, and we know the trouble that she caused for Howard yesterday. Jalinda Sally came off that bench and went to work in the post. Yeah, in the first half, you know, she, she really caused a lot of issues for Howard. And Coach Grace challenged her forwards at halftime to come out and be more aggressive. And that is what they did. Now, they didn't necessarily slow her down entirely because she was a force on the boards, but she wasn't necessarily that same force that she was in the first half. Absolutely. But one thing that we didn't really see yesterday was Jalinda Sally and Rebecca Wilson in the game at the same time. And we see that high-low action right there. That is two post players who can work together, and that could cause some matchup problems for the Bison. Indeed it can. Kaya Creek, a quick trigger three goes down. In a sport I feel like where a lot of people are trying to go small and perimeter based, there is still value in having size and having Sally and Wilson in together, like you said, Takira, can definitely cause mismatch problems. Long jump shot for Hamilton won't go. Thornton getting creative, causes yet another foul on Lawson. So that's two early fouls on Coppin State's best player, Aaliyah Lawson. And we have to see if Coach Laura Harper is going to opt to keep the best scorer on the floor in the game or if she's going to come out in. And it looks like she's going to have to sit Lawson on the bench. So that's good for Howard, getting her in foul trouble in the early going. Yes, and Marley Greenway is going to be the one who's going to come in and replace Aaliyah Lawson early on. So here's Thornton. A quick trigger three. Won't go. Rebound Sally. A force on the boards and deeds. Here's Hope Evans. Nice cross-court pass. Greenway. Her first three of the game is short. Here's Warren. Draws a good foul on Hamilton. The, the way that Coppin State is picking up these fouls right now, uh, you can almost expect the Bison will be in the bonus early in this game. Yeah. And drawing fouls to valuable players, too. Alexandria Hamilton and Aaliyah Lawson, their two best players, or their two highest scorers, at least already on the bench. Right. Abby Weiss is the one who comes in for Alexandria Hamilton. 
And, and with that in mind, the Bison have to continue to be in an attack mode. You don't have to settle for three-pointers. If it's a wide-open shot, I'm all for it. Let it fly. But uh, you, you see that Coppin State is very handsy earlier, early on in this game. Michaela Manette checking in for Anjanae Hutton. This is her first action early on in this one. Fort Davis puts her head down and just goes straight to the rim. Shot won't go. It's going to be out of Howard, Coppin State basketball. We're going to get a timeout on the floor. 8-8 eight, eight ball game early on. Good pace in this one. We'll be back on the Bison Sports Network after this. Back on the Bison Sports Network, 8-8 ball game right now. Coppin State's going to advance with it. And how the track has caused a lot of issues for Coppin State yesterday in the second half. Coach Craig's not afraid to go back to it. Liam Thorpe also has inserted, has been inserted into this ball game. Here's Hope Evans, kicks it over to Hamilton. Be a crowd. It's a great pressure defense by the Bison. And if you're Coppin State, not mad at the possession. It was just the fact that she traveled with the basketball. But I like how Coppin State is trying to attack the gaps in the zone that the Bison are running. Two turnovers apiece for each ball club early on. Gia Thorpe, the Energizer Bunny yesterday, attacks it strong, misses that off glass. She had a huge impact, too, and Coach said that she's still getting her legs back underneath her as she returns from the injury, Takira. Absolutely. She was gone for a long time, you know, so some injuries harder than others to recover from, but nonetheless, she looks good out there. Shot clock down to 10. Hope Evans maneuvering through the lane. Hamilton. Oh, nice steal by Gia Thorpe. Thorpe attacking. Left it short. And that's two short layups by Gia right there. You do a great job to get the steal. Take your time and finish the layup. Evans looking to use the screen by Sally. Hamilton, baseline drive. Coppin State wanted a foul. They didn't get one. Warren feeds it inside to Manette. Manette, that's a tough shot. Guess who's there? Gia Thorpe for the cleanup, and she's fouled. And she's coming right in again, making that instant energy, the, the energy bunny she is. Rebecca Wilson was the recipient of the foul, and she's slow to get back up. Checking in for Howard is Kanaya Harris, as you can see, rocking the blue mask. And Kanaya Harris, she played a, a very solid game yesterday as Gia Thorpe can't connect on the first one. But Kanaya Harris, I like the fact that she can come in the game and, and keep sort of that same tempo. She doesn't make a whole lot of mistakes, which you would like to see out of a freshman. She comes in and runs the offense the way that Coach Ty Grace likes. Yeah, the freshman from Capitol Heights, Maryland, went to C.H. Flowers High School. 
Inserted into the game is Tariq Allen, number zero for Coppin State. So they lose some of that size with Rebecca Wilson going to the bench. Hamilton, another strong attack. She's been very aggressive early on in this ball game, and you would think that that has to be a point of emphasis, especially with Aaliyah Lawson going to the bench. Yeah, it seems like she's trying to pick up where Aaliyah Lawson left off when she had to go take a seat when she picked up those two fouls. Looks like the foul is against Michaela Manette. First free throw up for Hamilton. It's uh, good. And if you're the Bison defense, I, I don't necessarily know what the game plan is, but you see that Hamilton is attacking the basket. Maybe a, a shorter closeout since you know that she wants to put the basketball on the ground and, and attack as opposed to shoot the three. Both free throws are good. Not settling for jump shots even though you're being zoned. Exactly. And Hope Evans, she's, she's a, a tough defender. She's been causing Jayla Thornton some problems. She is on that girl. And, and, that, and there we go, an offensive foul on Jayla Thornton. And the Pierce is going to have an offensive foul. It's going to go against the Bison. Coppin State will take over. Great point indeed right now. Kristen Marsh is going to check into the game along with Cache Dixon. So, again, Howard not afraid to go to that bench early and often. They got bodies who can do it. Here's Weiss. Back to Evans. Evans. And she rushes it up the court. And rushes, man. She's so quick. A lot of talking on defense. You got to like that if you're Howard. Hope Evans looking to penetrate and find that seam. Allen. Weiss. Baseline drive. Kicks back Allen. Three. Up. Won't go. Gets to him. Rebound Sally. And what a rejection from Annette talking that trash, <laughs> saying no, no, no. Get that out of here. That and look at Sally. Sally like, all right, I got something for that. I'm about to try to come back at you. <laughs> White, off the handoff. She trips. No call. Kicks back. Hamilton, the three. Up. In and out. Rebound, Harris. Gia Thorpe. That's a nice attack in the floater. Left is short. Here's Dixon, the mid-range jump shot. In and out again. And that's a good rebound by Thorpe. The foul's going to go against Abby Weiss. She tried to box out Thorpe. And, and if that's going to be who's defending Thorpe, if I'm, if I'm thinking about it, Gia, in my mind, I'm like, that's, that's barbecue chicken. I'm going at her. But uh, we see a couple of subs for Coppin State right now. <laughs> Wilson has checked back into the ball game. And we get our first signing of number 24, Ronnie Richardson, from my neck of the woods. She's from Birmingham, Alabama. So. And, and Gia Thorpe, she could have about uh, six points in this game right now. She's just struggling a little bit. Uh, hopefully she can get going. It's the easy ones, right? It's those free throws and layups. And, and there we go. You see the first one go through the hoop, and as a, a player – and as a shooter, you automatically like, okay, one went down. Let the rest of the game come to you. She raises her hand, acknowledging that her bad. Ten and nine early lead for Coffee State in this one. Richardson to inbound it. Look and she finds Evans. Now a good hands from Dixon to disrupt that pass. Evans has it. Good hands again from Dixon. Hey, she's causing some havoc at the top of that zone for the Bison. Very active. Making it very hard to get in the flow and the swing of things offensively. Hamilton looking to inbound it. She does. Gets it to Evans. Allen working. Hamilton stuck in that corner. Shot clock down to four. Coppin State got to get it up soon. Allen, that's a tough turnaround. Won't go. Good box out by Manette. And here comes Harris pushing it. Harris, oh, nice bounce pass to Thorpe. Thorpe! She's going to get fouled. Gia Thorpe being really aggressive early on, and I like to see that from a player who 
brings a lot of energy. Makes it very contagious. Absolutely. She's coming in the game. She's in attack mode, like we said, not settling for those threes. Her bread and butter is putting the basketball on the ground and going to the basket. So she's done a good job of doing that so far. And I believe this is her fifth and sixth foul shot attempts of this game already. And and she's only and she's only been on the floor for four minutes though. So think about that impact and think if she could actually connect on uh these layups and shot attempts that she's getting. She would have herself a uh, quite the first quarter, but still again she's attacking, she's in attack mode. Can't be mad at it because she hustles. That's going to be a hell ball in the possession now. A hell ball is going to go to Coppin State. The coach has to be really, really pleased, right? Like, I would imagine Coach Grace is very, very happy to see her play as well. Come here to come in this game with this much energy and passion and aggressiveness. I believe so. And, you know, it's one thing to – come in and make an impact but it's another to know that that's our veteran out there who's doing it she's setting the example for the younger players Anaya Wilson checking for the ball game for Howard as Gia Thorpe gets what might be a much needed rush Abby Weiss tied up gets it to Richardson smart decision by Richardson she saw Crystal and Marsh the shot blocker down there like let me pull that thing back out and look at the pick <laughs> of the net again Warding what looked to be an easy layup. Marsh, the lefty, got it. I like that. After the play, she like, count that. Oh, a poor pass from Evans. And, stay here on the end of power. and like we discussed, you can hear everything that's going on in the gym due to uh, there not being fans allowed in the arena because of COVID. And I hear the Howard players on the bench yelling, yes, ma'am, and just going off at her teammates. It's lovely. A little bit of trash talk never hurt nobody. Here's Dixon. That's an aggressive drive. And she gets the foul called against Allen. Foul's going to be called. I'm telling you, Takira, Howard just looks really, really Dixon. aggressive. They're in attack mode early on in this first quarter. You, you wouldn't have even known that they played a game yesterday. They look good. They look fresh. They look refreshed. But it's it's the free throws for me right now, Xavier. They're they're not shooting well early on in this game. Only fifty percent, forty four percent, excuse me. And you know they're getting to the free throw line, but now it's about finishing. She splits the pair, and that's a bit out of the norm for the leading free throw shooting team in the MEAC. Hope Evans draws a foul against Harris. The Bison don't like it. She might, she might have got her with somebody, you know. 11.1 seconds left. Finds Allen. Allen. Oh, nice. Nice. Allen at the buzzer won't go. It looks like that may have been blocked as well. Uh, yes, sir. Howard with an outstanding defensive first quarter and with an aggressive first quarter. It's 13 to 10. The Bison up over Coppin State. We'll be back on the Bison Sports Network after this. Experience. And Howard did a really good job of getting to the free throw line in that first quarter, but they only shot five of ten, so got to be room for improvement there if you're the vice. Harris being guarded by Evans. Mark. And they're going to call a foul off the ball. It's going to be down low. 
And you know, something that I, I didn't even think about, Xavier, we have the all same sets of referees in this game today as well. So you saw how they were calling it yesterday. A lot of fouls were called. So you have to imagine that teams uh, have an understanding of that as Chrislyn Marsh just sweeps through straight to the bucket. Very fundamentals with the shot fake and then the blow by Chrislyn Marsh making her impact so early on in this one as well. Struggled yesterday shooting the ball. Nice high-low action. Hamilton. Evans. Weiss. Shot clock down to six. Howard making cop and state work for everything. Weiss, that's a tough one, and it gets rejected by Kirsten Marsh. Come on now. That's her second block of the game. You love to see it. She's just there. She got the help for her teammates. Guard get beat. Don't worry about it. Chrislyn Marsh got the backup. I don't wear a bison jersey by any means. <laughs> I'm telling you, these blocks got me hyped. So I know what it's only doing for the energy of the women down there on the floor and on the sideline. Hope Evans called for the foul. Uh, and something we'll be on the lookout for. Coach Laura Harper had to send the leading scorer, Aaliyah Lawson, to the bench because she picked up two early fouls. How long will she go in this game before – trusting that Aaliyah Lawson won't pick up a third foul. I'm guessing as long as Coppin State can keep the game close, she'll, she'll keep Lawson on the bench, but we'll just have to see about that. Look at Evans just fly down the court again. Rebound Manette. And as a scorer and a shooter, Tucker, how much does that throw you out of your rhythm by sitting down for that long? Uh, it, it, it could be rough because she never had a chance to even insert herself into this game because she picked up those fouls so early. So the fact of the matter is she, she could be cold, but here she goes. Uh, I spoke her up. Lawson is coming back into this game. Lawson indeed is out. Evans to the bench. So let's see who commands the ball handling duties while their point guard gets a rest. Lawson, expect her to get it going. Hamilton lost her footing and that's a try. Another self-inflicted turnover, one that I know Coppin State is not pleased about. Anjanae Hutton comes back in the game. Kristen Marsh takes a seat. Michaela Manette takes a seat. Harris. Fort Davis inside Hutton. Hutton's been quiet offensively. Dixon kicks it back to Hudson on the baseline. The long two. Good. I love that shot. I love that shot. It's like don't even need to challenge Sally inside the paint if she can hit that little mid-range jumper along the baseline. The more she extends her range, the more dangerous she becomes as a threat. Weiss shovels it. Mid-range jump shot for Sally is good. <laughs> and Sally's like, I can do it too. I can shoot the mid-range. Whatever you can do, I can do better. Back and forth. <laughs> 17 to 12, Howard is up. Fort Davis, and they're going to call a foul on the Fort Davis and, and that's And that's on Lawson. She picked up her third as soon as she came back in. Now, if you personally ask me, I, I don't think that was a good foul call, but uh, if I'm in the ref's head, I'm thinking it's because Lawson swiped down instead of swiping up, and typically when you when you swipe down, they will call that. So Lawson, she, she has to depart from this ball game once again. Lawson displaying a bit of frustration. Yeah, when you're the leading scorer and you have three fouls and you have yet to score, that, that could be rough. Good rejection from Wilson as Fort Davis tried to spin and win, but she couldn't get that to go. And Hope Evans is back in for Lawson. It's going to be a foul underneath against Anjane Hutton. She doesn't like it. Uh, as a freshman, sometimes some things you got to let go. There was no need to fight with Rebecca Wilson down there. She didn't have, you know, ten toes, five hands, excuse me, ten hands facing in a position to catch the basketball. You got to let that one go. 
10 toes and five hands like here, that may be somebody who I don't want to guard if they had five hands. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, five fingers. <laughs> I meant 10 fingers, really. I'm all discombobulated with the logic. But if you're a basketball <laughs> fan you, and you know the game, you know what I mean. You know, know exactly. where I was at with that one. You know exactly five hands. Mean. That's funny. I'm thinking of a Space Jam character. <laughs> nice move by Hamilton as she gets the runner to go. Hutton, the jump shot. It's two back-to-back key jump shots for Anjanae Hutton, really stretching out her game. And, she, and she's like, you got to guard me. I, I'm not just going to put it on the floor. You got to guard me. Weiss, that's a quick three. Left is short. And you can hear the coach. She said, that's too that quick, That is Abby. too quick, Abby. I, I agree with that. And that's a travel. Got three in, three out right now. Ayanna Warren, Kaya Creek, and Jayla Thornton check into the game for the Bison. Tari Allen is in for Coppin State. Howard plays really, really well in Bird Gymnasium. They won five straight, dating back to last year. Weiss, the long baseline, too, is good. And that's a nice shot by Weiss. She made sure she was set on the catch. And we'll have to see who is going to step up for Coppin State and be that main scorer right now with Lawson out of the game. Maybe have to do it by committee. Here's Jayla Thornton. That's a tough two. And look at Hutton battling down low. Kaya Creek, the long two, won't go. Three-point ball game is Cap Coppin State could get within one or tie here on this possession. Abby Weiss looking for the tie. Won't go. That's short. Loose ball. Goes to the hands of Sally. She gets fouled. Basket won't count, but she will go to the free throw line for two. <laughs> you can see Rebecca Wilson and Sally playing a game of slap box there. Huh? Uh, yeah, slapping each other's heads. She like, girl. <laughs> Jamila Mitchell checks into the ball game for Coppin State. The Atlanta, Georgia native. Two deep Southerners on this Coppin State team. I can relate. Yes, Mr. Mr. Alabama over here. <laughs> <laughs> and Sally, you talked about it yesterday. She's not a great free throw shooter, but she hits the first. And that's, and that's good in a time where Coppin State is still, you know, very much in this game, only down by two points. Finding different ways to score right now. She splits the pair. Fort Davis snags the board. Back come the Bison. Hutton did a good job of sealing and establishing position early enough so Warren, all she had to do was just set the plate and just feed it to her, and she drew the foul against Sally. And I agree with that. And Warren, she's a she's a great passer, especially getting the ball to those post players. And, uh, uh, bit of a poor pass, but Hutton corrals it. Great decision by Hutton. Just, just let's set up the play. No need to rush right here. Thornton, maybe a bit of a poor pass since Thornton was swarmed with Coppin State defenders around her up in that high post area. Well, two, well, two people came immediately as, on the catch for Thornton. They don't want her to get going at, at all. And, and so far, held, holding her to zero points. Well, Coppin State has made it difficult for Jayla Thornton in the first half of both ball games. Here's Sally working down low. Ayanna Warren, not afraid to get dirty, get bruised, and battle amongst the trees. She calls the jump ball, but it's going to stay Coppin State basketball. And we're going to get a media timeout. 4.44 left in the first half. It's 19-17. to 17. Advantage Howard will be back on the Bison Sports Network after this.
And we're back in the second quarter, 444 remaining, 10 seconds left on the shot clock, 19 to 17. Howard has the lead. Evans, back to Hamilton, who's checked into the ball game. Sally working down low. And she spins and she gets a foul. The recipient of the foul is going to be Hutton. And that'll be Hutton's second. So uh, wouldn't be surprised if we see Chrislyn Marsh get back in this one. Or Manette, I, I don't know what um, Coach Ty Grace is going to decide to do. Sally hits the first. This was a familiar sight yesterday, Takira Singh. Mm -hmm. Sally at the free throw line as she was establishing position down low a lot in that first half yesterday. For sure. And, and today, the, the difference is she's actually knocking in her free throws. So yesterday, we were like, ah, it's not as bad that the Bison are picking up fouls. But today, if she's going to be hit from the free throw line, you know, you want to refrain from fouling her. And then again, Hope Evans all over Jayla Thorian. And Anjane Hutton with a tough and one opportunity. She's playing really solid basketball for this Howard bunch. Well, what I love the most about her game as a freshman, she's so bouncy. She plays off the bounce. Like we said, extending her range, not just a post player. The and one opportunity is good. Oh, she ran back and she knew that that free throw was pure. Three-point advantage, 22 to 19 for Howard. There's Evans. The play is called out, and let's see how they execute it. Trying to isolate Rebecca down low. Oh, a little bit more high-low action. Guess who again? The, the smallest person on the floor getting in there, and that's why they say when you're a post player and you catch that basketball, you're supposed to keep it up high over your head so the little people like Ayanna Warren can't get to it. Ayanna Warren says, I'll take that. Thank you very much. Jayla Thornton being guarded by Hope Evans. That's a tough mid-range jump shot. Almost got it to go, but she gets Hope Evans to commit a foul. And by all means, Jayla Thornton is trying to get herself into the book and and do things that are uncharacteristic. We know Jayla Thornton is a, lights out from the three-point range, but right now, you know, she has to find another way to get it done since Coppin State is doing such a good job of guarding her outside the three. In case you're wondering, Jayla Thornton only, only needs four more three-pointers to move up to third all-time in threes made in the MEAC Conference. A stellar career for a stellar player. And yeah, that would that would be such a great accomplishment. We know that Jayla Thornton she moved to the thousand point club this season as well. So she's done some great things in her Bison career. Uh, so shout out to Jayla Thornton for continuing to get it done. Both free throws were good for Thornton. Maybe that'll get her going. Twenty four to nineteen, Howard is up as we wind down this second quarter. Mitchell. Back iron. Warren hustles after it, saves it. Here's Warren pushing it, what she likes to do. Thornton refusing the screen, shooting it, what she likes to do. Got it. Oh, man. Was that by the Under Armour logo? That, that was the Under Armour logo. And, and, and what I like about that one, she created her own shot for the three. We have a timeout here on the floor by Coppin State. Xavier and I will be back. Twenty-seven and nineteen. Howard up eight. Really stretching this lead before halftime. Kaya Creek back into the game for Howard. Evans, that's a tough drive. Left hand in and out. She's really struggled finishing around the rim in these two games against Howard. Yeah, and it's unfortunate because Evans has proved that she can get by almost anybody as Kaya Creek is off the mark there. But look who flies in for that rebound. 
Brooklyn Fort Davis. And it does not look good right now for Coppin State. Jamila Mitchell grabbing her shoulder and she's on the ground right now. And we see that the, the trainer is coming out there to, to check on her. We hope hope that she's okay. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have a stoppage in play, but we are gonna keep it here. Let's hope and pray that everything is okay with Jamila Mitchell. The Tykera, as we wind down in this second quarter, what have you liked thus far from Howard in this ball game? I like their aggressiveness getting to the basket and, and attacking mainly in this game. So they're, And I feel like their defensive presence has led to offensive opportunities the way that they have really been aggressive on both sides of the floor. It's looked good. And it's not just one player. They're doing it as a whole from the bench to the starters. That's a tough place where Hamilton picked up her dribble. Nonetheless, everything's okay for Coppin State as they advance it in the front court. Richardson. Greenway, I'm sorry. Greenway is number four. And Allen drives. That's a strong attack. And they're going to call a foul on number 23. That's Rebecca Wilson for Coppin State. Well, Rebecca Wilson, she has been working so hard down low to get in front of Anjane Hutton. And for Coppin State to not be able to make that entry pass to her or see her, uh, I would be frustrated if I was her as a post player because she is doing a lot of hard work. That is her third foul, which is going to send Hutton to the free throw line. And she gets a pair. First one rims out. Abby Weiss checking into the game. She's been pump faked. They sent her in, ran her back. Now she can come in. And she'll come in for Terry Allen. Howard shooting 57, I'm so, excuse me, 60% from the free throw line. Not their best outing. Poor pass from Evans, and Ayanna Warren is going to get it for Howard. And a poor pass from Warren, and now Coppin, and Coppin State's State going to get it. State gets it right back. So, so that's been the one constant in the two games that we've seen so far. Both teams just committing some unforced turnovers. As much as this lead is expanding for Howard right now, they could have even more points, and they could have an even bigger lead if they were to knock down their free throws. I'm sure that Coach Ty Grace will mention that to them in the halftime intermission. Hamilton, left hand is good. And Anjanae Hutton, smart job just to let that one go, or she would have picked up her third foul right there. Just push it on the offensive end and try to get something. And here we go, Gia Thorpe back in the game for the Bison. Thornton, a bit of a wild shot. And, and and that was forced by Thor, and again, unnecessary. And now Coppin State gets free chances at the free throw line as well. Maybe a bit of frustration for the senior, trying to get it going. Coppin State's made it really difficult for her to find a rhythm and to take over like we know Jayla Thornton can do. They have, but knowing that you are the leading scorer and you're the threat, teams are going to game plan around you. So she has to learn how to adjust in games when things like that are, are going on. Don't force it. Let the game come to you. Rebecca Wilson knocks down both free throws. It's a five-point lead for Howard, 28 to 23. Thornton. Being harassed by Evans. Now she got a double team and she shoots it anyway. Won't go. Ayanna Warren down it there. Is. Fort Davis left it short on the rim. Wilson hits the deck. We're going to get a jump ball. And, and that was a wild possession. Uh, Howard was able to save it and get the basketball back off the, the jump ball. But a lot of good shots just didn't fall in this particular possession. So we'll see what can happen right here. Michaela Manette inserted into the game as she replaces Fort Davis. Davis 
Hutton trying to get post position, as you can see. Here's Warren. A play's called. Warren looking to use the screen. Hamilton all in her grill. Manette working inside. And they're going to call too many steps. So another unforced turnover for the Bison. Here's Weiss. Evans. Maybe a bit of miscommunication, but that results in a travel. So, you know, Takira, I feel like we keep seeing back-to-back -back turnovers sometimes. It'll be one team doing a job of giving the other team the ball, and then the other team says, no, right back at it. I don't want it right now. Yeah, yeah, we've, we've seen that quite a few times in this game. So, I can't really give you the answer as to why that <laughs> is. Uh, I, I could say settle down or anything like that, but sometimes that's just the way, you know, basketball games go. Indeed. Jayla Thornton hits, shoots a three and hits the deck. No foul call. And I think that was the problem with that three was she was trying to force the foul as opposed to just holding her regular form and, you know, going straight up and straight down. I've seen players shoot a three looking for contact, and I can only imagine that you don't have that same level of focus on hitting the actual shot as you do drawing the contact. Absolutely not. Hamilton, tough drive inside, won't go hunting with the rebound. A tough rebound at that. 40 seconds left to go until intermission. Thornton looking to get it going. Kicks it inside to Manette. That's a nice feed. Nice. Shot clock off. Dangerous pass. Oh, dangerous. Oh, that's a late foul call. As Hamilton hit the deck. He almost got away with one. Hamilton's going to go to the free throw line. She's the leading scorer right now for Coppin State with 10 points. She's stepped up since Lawson has been out of the game. As we see, Hamilton misses the first of two free throws, but she's definitely stepped up. She's been attacking, honestly, since the tip, though. Aggressive indeed. The second of a pair, in and out. Missed them both from the Bison. Warren, a strong attack. She can hit it as she hits the stanchion. She's going to go to the free throw line. And that's a great job. What I like about the Bison, as soon as the ball goes through the net or if there's a missed free throw or a missed shot, period, they are looking to push, get something as fast as possible. Uh, it, it doesn't seem as though, you know, they like playing in the half court. I really don't know a team that does, but the fact that they get the ball and they can – push it so fast down the floor, a number of players can. It makes them more effective on the offensive end. Warren hits the first. Were you a player that found her employment playing up and down? Yes. I hate it playing. I hate it playing in the half court. It would be fun sometimes, but, you know, when you get that rebound and run and it's, it's me and you and I'm going up against somebody one-on-one, -on -one, and there goes Gia Thorpe flying in for that rebound, can't connect. Coppin stay back, or excuse me, Howard gets the basketball back. They can hold for the last shot. The Chief draws a foul against Abby White. With 1.8 seconds left, Ayanna Warren draws a key foul. And she gets a chance to knock down two free throws before we send it to halftime to extend the lead to potentially 10. Yeah, the, the free throw woes continue for Howard. So many opportunities at the line. Second free throw is now. Good. So Howard's going to go into the half shooting 11 for 19 from the free throw line as Evans is going to let the clock go out. And we have reached halftime here in Burke Gymnasium. Howard is up 32 to 23 over Coppin State.
family with the recent passing of Anthony Tony Lee and Chantel Petty. Lee was the official voice of Bison Athletics, serving as public address announcer for the past two years following the death of former legendary PA announcer Shelly Bauer Jr. Lee stepped in and quickly established himself as the new voice of the Bison, calling all home football, men's and women's basketball and volleyball games. He also filled in for men's and women's swimming and diving meets. The highlight of Lee's tenure at Howard was his selection as the official PA announcer for the 2019 Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference Volleyball Tournament. Petty was a member of the Bison's Athletic Sports Medicine Department during her underground years at Howard from 2009 to 2013. During her undergraduate years, she loved her HBCU experience at HU and graduated from the Hilltop in 2013. Both of these individuals will be sincerely missed by the Howard University community. And there is action that we must return to. And in doing so, Howard has a lead 32 to 23 as Kaya Creek drives strong to the rim and gets rejected. Neither team, Takira, shot well uh, in the first half. Uh, both teams were shooting 28, 30% hovering around there. So as Lawson drains the three. And, and Lawson, it's nice to have you back. We know you were out with those three fouls and she comes in and she's like, I'm getting it in in the second half. Uh, if you're if you're the Bison, though, I'm thinking attack mode towards Lawson or whoever is in the game for this for this sake because Coppin State is in some foul trouble as Kaya Creek misses the mark right there and Lawson comes up with the rebound for Coppin. Yeah, Lawson not afraid to let it fly, so expect her to do so in this second half as long as she can stay out of foul trouble. Evans using the Sally screen. Hamilton, she had a great first half for Coppin State, and she's going to draw a good foul against Brooklyn Fort Davis. You know, she ended up doing one of those moves that I've seen quite a few players do. Once they get you on your back, they kind of stop and shoot, thus creating a foul. Yeah, yeah, that jump stop while a player is still in motion, a defender, I should say, is in motion, uh, is one of the ultimate moves to draw a foul. Reserved for those with nice offensive packages. Hamilton, first free throw, rims in and out. And Hamilton, she had herself a nice first half, and we see her trying to get it going again in the second half. Howard did a good job of rebounding in that first half. They out-rebounded Coppin State. And they got to the free throw line almost. They shot nine more free throws than Coppin State did. So pretty aggressive first half for the Bison. Let's see if they can carry that over into this second half. Nice shot by Anjane Hutton to get herself out of the double team. She was stuck between Sally and Rebecca Wilson, but she she was able to get it out to create some more opportunity for the Bison, even though they, they're they looking a bit stagnant right now, Xavier. Yeah. Hutton, the long two, got it. Her jump shot is so pure. So pure. She's hit two of those already, and we saw her hit another long range too. So i like to see Hutton step out and expend, extend that game, if you will. And I guess that's the gamble that Coach Laura Harper is making because they haven't adjusted to stepping out there on Anjane Hutton yet. So I guess she's like, if she's going to beat us from anywhere, she's going to have to beat us with the mid-range. Kaya Creek draws a foul against Jalinda Sally. On the other end for Coppin State, what I'm seeing is they're trying to initiate a lot of offense through their bigs. And, you know, whether it's Sally creating for Wilson or Wilson creating for Sally, it just seems to be a combination that they've had to go to because Lawson has not really found her rhythm. So, And it's a great, great game plan. On paper, they outsize the Bison. So the, the high-low game is working, and it looks good. Hutton working her way around the rim and scores again. Hutton is playing really, really well. And right now in other MEAC action, we do have Morgan State beating Delaware State right now, 72 to 65, in case you are wondering what else is going on in the MEAC. Dish Evans finds Hamilton. That's an open three ball. Good. Alexandra Hamilton not afraid to let it fly. She has, she has 13 points in this ball game. Warren, open jumps out at the elbow, won't go. Rebound, Wilson. Lawson, Weiss. 
Lawson, dribble drive, nice feed inside to Wilson. Aaliyah Lawson with a nice bounce pass. 31-36, Coppin stays slowly trying to get back into this thing. Hutton swings it over to Creek, Creek drives baseline, tough mid-range jump shot won't go. Now we're seeing the opposite effect, Xavier. Uh, the Bison come out hot and ready in that first half, and now it seems as though they have slowed down a little bit as Coppin State is making this push. Lawson open three. Got it. And, and she got a little strut going down court. But, but how is she ever that wide open? You leave the best player on the floor with not a, a defender around her. That's target practice for somebody with that type of skill set. And she like, yeah, you better guard me. It's almost a disrespect to leave me this wide open. Fort Davis and Creek are going to head to the bench for Howard as Manette and Thorpe come into the game. Coach Ty Gray's not pleased with what she's seen thus far to open up this second half. Howard also a second half team. Yeah, typically, and, and, that's, and that's why I said it's a little – Crazy as Abby, why did she do a little something, a little somersault flip on that foul to get herself back up? Uh, good thing everybody's okay as Gia Thorpe and both of her, just both Gia Thorpe and Abby White's just playing real hard. I got to give her a seven only because she didn't stick the landing. <laughs> Would you have done a better job than that? I need Absolutely. to know. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> Richardson comes in the game for Coppin State. 36 34, Coppin State inching. Back in this one. They've done a good job coming out aggressively in this third quarter. Hutton. And that's going to go out of bounds. It's going to stay here on the side of Howard. Coppin State, they're, they're executing that double team really nicely. On the catch with the post players, they just have two people coming over trying to force the ball out of the post players' hands. Unforced error as Warren couldn't control it. And it looks like Harris may be coming in to replace Ayanna Warren. Coach Grace not pleased at all, having a conversation, a coaching moment with Ayanna Warren on the sideline there. Here's Evans, kicks it, Lawson, an uh, open three again. This one won't go. Sally with the board. And she's fouled. The foul is going to go against Thornton. So right now, Coppin State is either getting open shots or multiple shots. And, again, that's not what Coach Ty Grace wants from this Howard Bison ball club. Yeah, the second chance opportunities uh, can, can really hurt, especially if they result in Jalinda Sally stepping up and, and hitting her free throws. Only around 28% free throw shooter, but today she's proving that she can knock them in. Knock them in, indeed. She's four of five at the line. Make it five of six. Jalinda Sally having herself a day. I tell you, yesterday, though, Jalinda Sally, she had a nice stroke. I couldn't understand why she was missing from the free throw line. Maybe it was a focus thing. Here's Harris looking to probe. Instead, she brings it back out. Hutton in unfamiliar territory on the arc. Manette, easy shot, puts it in. Here's Lawson. Evans looking to set up some offense. Lawson, another open three. Man, she is feeling it. And you know, most of the time when a player sits out for so long in the first half, they, they can't really get into the game. But Lawson, that hasn't phased her one bit. Aaliyah Lawson showing up and showing out in this third quarter. But Jayla Thornton says, watch me do what I do as she hits a nice mid-range jump shot. A one-point advantage for Howard, 40 to 39. Richardson, nice show and go. Doesn't fall. Sally working around the rim. That's and a tough shot. There she goes. There she goes. When she gets the ball and she spin moves over that right shoulder, man. Thornton, here comes the double team. Manette, nice. nice cut. Gia Thorpe at the rim. 
And, and that's a way for Gia Thorpe to just continue to move without the basketball, finding the openings. You see that they're double teaming. Somebody has to be open. And wait for Gia Thorpe to make herself visible for the easy two. Good hands by Thorpe. As soon as Gia Thorpe enters the ball games, things just change. Yeah, she just like we we can say it over and over again. It won't change. She she brings a some sort of spark with her. A spark plug indeed. Coppin stayed off to a brilliant start in this third quarter. They've dwindled the lead down to one. It's 42 to 41. The advantage Howard will be back on the Bison Sports Network after this. Back here in Burr Gymnasium, three minutes and 27 seconds remaining in this third quarter. Coppin State has come out, and they have just completely flipped the switch. Here's Dixon. She's just checked into the ball game for Howard. That's a tough shot. A Won't wild go. shot, but they try to stick with it. This is going to be another tie-up, and this one is going to go to Coppin State. And a, a poor pass. Aaliyah Lawson seems very confused on the miscommunication there. And Howard's going to get the ball right back. Thorpe. And she gets tripped up. And, 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 that's, and that's, that's four. That's four against Aaliyah Lawson. And it looks like she's going to head to the bench after having a tremendous start to this third quarter. Man, that, that, that's, a, that's a tough one for her to pick up a foul. In a situation like that, it was no need to foul right there. And I know she's, she's just trying to be aggressive. Kristen Marsh, that's a tough shot. Won't go out of bounds off of Michaela Manette. We haven't mentioned it, but Aaliyah Lawson from north of the border, from Whitby, Ontario, Canada. A ways away from home, to say the least. Yeah, definitely Canada native. Um, don't see too many in Division One college basketball. A lot of talent indeed up there where it gets pretty cold. Here's Evans looking for a screen from Sally. Richardson with Sally. They kick it back to Richardson in the corner. She has an open three, back ironed it. Man, that, that was a nice play. Great look from Sally in the high post to kick it to Richardson. Just couldn't fall. What a nice bounce pass from Gia Thorpe as Michaela Manette knocks down the close range jump shot. Right, I was about to say, and an even better play by the Bison. Ah, uh, they're making it difficult. We saw this yesterday where Kristen Marshall was able to get a bunch of steals because of that pressure that Howard was putting on. Well, it's not even that. They don't have a second ball handler in the game who they can feel comfortable with bringing the ball up besides, you know, Hope Evans now that Lawson is out. So not only do you lose a score with Lawson on the bench, you also lose somebody else that handles the ball well and can help go up against this bison press that they're putting on. And they must have read your mind because back into the ball game comes Aaliyah Lawson. I, I can foresee Coppin State trying to do an offense-defense type of thing and try to keep her out from defense as much as possible. That's a good point. They had an open Wilson down low. They missed her. Here's Hamilton. Oh, keeps the dribble alive even though she's on the deck. Great hustle. Lawson, open three. In and out. Wilson, the rebound. 
Nice speed inside. Wilson, looks like he got tipped by Manette. But there's Sally for the cleanup. Come on now. Sally, Sally's doing work. She's she's on double-double alert. Four boards away, and I feel like she will get that in this game. Here's Dixon to Manette. And Manette may have got away with a travel. She, with she, de travels, she definitely got away with one. Definitely. There's Hamilton feeding Sally in the high post. And Sally wanted some movement. You can hear her barking at Wilson, telling her to move. Here's Evans. Good hands from Thorpe. Sally, the free throw line jump shot in and out. 45 seconds left in this exciting third quarter. Thorpe, tough move, and she's Ooh. hacked by Sally. Yeah. Sally said, nothing easy up in this, up in here. Now, I don't know if that was the smartest foul. Uh, we'll wait till the board to update, but I believe that will be Sally's fourth as well. But but let me just see to make sure. Yeah, so that's that's four on Sally, four on Lawson. J just not a very smart foul by her, especially since she's been playing so well for Coppin State. Maybe a bit of a frustration foul. They could have lingered over from that from that uh, from that play, excuse me, on the offensive end, where she didn't get movement, and you can see she's being taught right now, having a coachable moment. Dort misses the first free throw. Hutton is checked in as well for Michaela Manette. As yeah. Howard looks to stretch the lead by two. Yeah, still still very much a ball game as Gia Thorpe misses yet another pair of free throws. She struggled from the free throw line, Xavier. Takir, if I would have told you that the number one shooting free throw team in the MEAC were to have missed 10 free throws in this ball game, you probably would have thought that I wasn't telling you the truth. And, and if they would connect, you know, more from the free throw line, this game could possibly be out of reach for Coppin State. So the missed free throws have really been saving the Eagles. Is Harris off the inbound. Hutton finds Marsh. Dixon, that's a strong drive, won't go. Some collision down low as she hits the deck. Not as many bodies hitting the floor today as they did yesterday. Yeah, yeah, they're probably real banged up from yesterday. That was an intense game, Xavier. 24 seconds left on the game clock, 19 on the shot clock. Here's Thorpe. The junior from Pittsburgh. Nice crossover. That's a strong move. Won't go Hutton with the offensive board. Strong inside for two. Come on now. And look at the defense, forcing turnovers, causing chaos, and thus resulting in a foul that will send Harris to the line with .6 seconds. And, and you love to see it. It is an unlikely lineup in the game for the Bison right now, too, and that's where we go back to the, the drop-off. It just doesn't happen often. You have Kanaya Harris out there on the floor, Gia Thorpe, Cache Dixon, Ajene Hutton, and Chrislyn Marsh. So this lineup, they haven't seen much playing time together, but you wouldn't be able to tell by the efforts out there. 47-43 heading into the final period of regulation. Coppin State came out strong in the third quarter, but Howard.
Fourth quarter on the way from Bird Gymnasium. Let's take a look at some of the leaders right now in points for Coppin State. Alexandra Hamilton, she has 13. Jalinda Sally has 11. And for Howard, Anjanae Hutton has 14. Jayla Thornton, the next closest with seven. Speaking of Hutton, that's Ooh. a tough drive, and they're going to call a block. That's a bang-bang type of play, but it results in a blocking foul against number zero, Tari Allen, for Coppin State. Coppin State also has to be pleased, Takira. They have eight assists and 12 turnovers, so more turnovers than assists, and yet they're only down by five. Yeah, their their efforts on the offensive end is – it's been good. You know, I can't be mad at it. I think just from a scoring standpoint, they're outmatched. I think the Bison just have more people who can get it done offensively than Coppin State does. The loose ball, which went out of bounds, is going to result in Howard basketball as Hutton has split the pair. As we got a quick stoppage in play. Maybe it's a clock issue. Hard to tell exactly what's going on here. Continuing with some of the leaders, though, throughout this game, uh, on the rebounding side of things, on the glass, Jalinda Sally for Coppin State, she has eight. As Takira mentioned earlier, she's on double-double watch. And for Howard, Brooklyn Fort Davis has nine rebounds. So she did a good job rebounding yesterday and, and has continued to move that trend upward. As we get everything cleared up, it's back to action. Here's Harris. Hutton, she's been fantastic today. Hutton had a position established in the middle of the paint. They missed her. Thorpe driving. Strong attack. Won't go. She gets her own board, but it's batted out. Howard has a fresh 20. Dixon, three. No. Look at Thorpe. Man. Flying in. And the bench loves it, Takira. The bench and everybody on the floor. You see how fast they ran over to help Chrislyn march up because her efforts was just everything in that possession, trying to get it back for the Bison. It's like it may have been a tie-up, which is going to result in Coppin State basketball. 48-43 advantage, Howard. Just underway in this fourth and final quarter in Bird Gymnasium. Oh, she lost it. Another turnover. Here's Thorpe going downhill. Right-hand shot is up and good. There she goes. Gia Thorpe, she's had her handprints all over this game in a number of ways for the Bison, man. She's really getting after it in all aspects on the floor. Sally, back iron, that free throw line jump shot. And it's really since the moment Gia Thorpe was inserted into this ball game, I mean, she's just made an impact and hasn't let up since. And, it's you know, it, it feels like she's been on the floor for 30 minutes, and there goes Gia Thorpe, misses the mark. But she's only played 14 minutes in this ball game. So, you know, that just goes to show how well she's doing it and what she brings to the floor for the Bison when she's out there. Quality over quantity. Weiss. Finds Lawson to Evans using that screen. Weiss shoots a deep three. Got it. Locked and loaded and ready to fire. Abby Weiss hits a Critical three as the lead is now shrunk into four. Hutton, nice jump shot from Hutton. That won't go. But I like that she's letting it fly, Tykira. And Gia Thorpe gets hacked, and she's going to go to the free throw line. And again, it's Gia Thorpe. She's She's been so active in this game. And this will be her ninth and tenth free throw attempt. Unfortunately, she's only hit two so far, sh shooting 25% from the strike. But she's definitely been getting there off of just pure hustle. Five O boards in this game, Xavier, for Gia. You'd love to see it. Gia Thorpe's first free throw is in. And, Ty, that's one thing that you can't teach. You can't teach effort. 
That's just something that you just got to go out there and just play with every single night. Man, you can't teach it at all. Well-deserved break coming for Gia Thorpe. You can't, can't teach effort and energy at all, Xavier, just to piggyback off of what you said. That passion for the game, you have to have it instilled in – or it's instilled in you. Excuse me, nobody can instill it in you. Here's Hamilton. It's a tough drive. She looked to get the foul call, didn't get it. Marsh did a good job of staying vertical. Hutton taking it coast to coast. Watch me do what I Come do. Come on now. Anjane Hutton. And Coach Harper, she's seen enough. Yeah, Coach Harper and company, they need a timeout. What a play from Anjane Hutton. 46-54, Howard up by eight. 738 remaining in this fourth quarter. We'll be back on the Bison Sports Network after this. We're back with 739 remaining in this fourth and final quarter here at Burr Gymnasium. It's been a great two-day series with Coppin State as Aaliyah Lawson advances it in the front court. Hamilton to Weiss. Good ball movement. Hamilton, another tough drive. Almost got that one to go. That play looked almost identical to the one that she just had. Uh, but again, Howard doing a great job of staying vertical and not fouling. Yeah, Howard is doing a nice job at that, especially now you know that Coppin State's MO is really attacking the basket. The only one that's the only two players who are really getting up threes are, are Lawson and Weiss. Greenway is in the game for Coppin State as Evans gets a breather. For Howard, you have Hutton, Warren, Thornton, Marsh, and Wilson. 20 seconds on the shot clock for Coppin State. That's an open jump shot for Sally. Left it way short. Rebound Thornton. Thornton, transition triple. No. Look at Marsh flying in there again. He would have been a friendly fire. Took out our own teammate. Lawson getting fancy. Looks like a bit of a hand check going against Warren. Now, Ty, I'm not trying to start anything, but, you know, I think that when Jayla Thornton saw Weiss guarding her, she decided, oh, yeah, I got to let this one fly. Yeah, and I'm not mad at that, but I'm also thinking mindset. If I do see Weiss guarding me, I'm going at her. Uh, Jayla Thornton's bigger. She stands at about 5'9". Hamilton. Greenway. Being harassed by Wilson. Good defense from Wilson. Shot clock down to four. Weiss got to make something happen. Sally has to hoist. In and out. Warren. Probably going to slow it down as we're under six and a half. Hutton. Oh, look at Marsh. Had to get it to her. Yeah, Takir, you're right. And I'm sure that you're going to say what I was going to say. Right, she, she established great position down low. Definitely. That's a, that was a great look by Kirsten Marsh. Richardson comes in for Lawson. And Evans is back in for Abby Weiss. Kick ball. Thornton, a corner three off the inbound pass, won't go. Sally with the board. Sally kicks it over. Hamilton thought about it. Instead, put on the deck. Creative move. Oh, that's, that's a tough one. That, that was a great move to the basket. Just went in and out. Nice job by Hamilton. Wilson in transition. Won't go. And Warren being. I'm sure Warren is being a pest 
to Coffin State. Like, that's probably how they have to view her right now. Yeah, she, she's everywhere on the floor. We've seen a few scoreless possessions, Xavier, so we'll see which team can kind of break the ice and, and settle in and, and get a bucket to go. Warren looking to inbound it. They find Hutton around the rim. Oh, nice footwork. The up and under. It gets them every time, Xavier. And that's a freshman tie, not playing like it, though. Yeah, she's, she's up to 19 points, five boards for the freshman, Anjanae Hutton. She's tough, and I, I don't know about that one. That, that looked like a clean strip to me from Chrislyn Marsh. As a coach, Ty, I want to know, are you one who would – would you be all up in the ref's grill after a questionable call like that? Or are you going to be sit back and be a little bit more calm and, and chill on the sideline? I'm going to tell my player that she did a great job and to stick with it from a standpoint that the Bison are up 10. Uh, I'm, I'm a little bit more lax, it's, although it's still a lot of time left in this game for Coppin State to cut into the lead. But, uh, you know, nonetheless, pro probably just let that one go. Let Crescent Marsh know that she did a great job. Great job by Marsh. Questionable call by the officials. Nonetheless, basketball is going to continue to be played. And Jayla Thornton, she, she's done. Uh, she, she picked up her fifth right there, so... She'll, she'll end her afternoon, seven points and three rebounds. See Kaya Creek about to enter this ball game, and Jayla Thornton, she'll depart from this one after fouling out. Tough game for Thornton. Coppin State did not make it easy on her at all. But Howard has done it by committee, by relying, first and foremost, by relying on Anjanae Hutton, and everyone else has picked up the slack. Yeah, and it was a tough one for Thornton, but again, it just speaks to the depth that Howard has, that without their leading scorer, they're still up. Uh, looks like that was Wilson who tried to save it, and she throws it out of bounds. Media timeout. 46 to 56, Howard up by 10 as we close in on this fourth quarter. Howard University Department of Athletics lost two members of the Bison family with the recent passing of Anthony Tony Lee and Chantel Petty. Lee was the official voice of Bison Athletics serving as public address announcer for the past two years following the death of former legendary PA announcer Shelley Bauer Jr. Lee stepped in and quickly established himself as the new voice of the Bison, calling all home football, men's and women's basketball, and volleyball games. He also filled in for men's and women's swimming and diving meets. The highlight of Lee's tenure at Howard was his selection as the official PA announcer for the 2019 Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference Volleyball Tournament. An individual who will be sincerely missed. It's back to the action. Ha. Warren got caught with a carry to come out of that break. So I know Coach Ty Grace isn't pleased with that. It's always frustrating for a coach. You have a timeout and you instantly turn the basketball over out of the timeout. Cop and State looking to make a comeback, and if they want to do so, it's got to be done quick. And that's not the way to do it, as Warren did a good job of disrupting that pass. Lawson. Here's Evans. Kicks it. Richardson. That's a three. Won't go. Creek with the board. And we haven't seen a lot of Creek in this game. You know, specifically, she she hit the first three, sort of like yesterday, to get it going for the Bison. And, and since then, we haven't seen her on the floor a whole lot. She's only logged 14 minutes in this one. And not much of a, not as much of a Kaya Creek sighting as maybe we were accustomed to earlier in the season. Here's Evans, swings it over to Richardson. 
Hamilton thought about it. Sally working in that paint. That's where she makes her bread and butter. And she's fouled. And, and Crystal and Mars, she, she didn't stay vertical on that one, which is why the refs made that foul call. So checking in for the Bison, Manette and Thorpe. Thorpe did a great job yesterday at closing out the ball game with a lot of key and clutch plays on the defensive end. So no surprise that Coach Ty Grace is going to roll with her. you got to think for the remainder of the four minutes. And, and, and that's a smart option. Thorpe is a, a smart player. Going to bring that hustle and that drive. Sally splits the pair. She's a remarkable six of eight from the free throw line. Here's Warren. I'll oh, try to try to dump it inside the Manette, but it goes out of bounds. And you can hear the Coppin State's Coppin State coach sideline saying we need one more stop blue. Here's Lawson to Evans. Here's Hamilton. Oh, she That's had a travel. A... Uh, you, saw, you saw she was going to go with the up and under, but her foot slid as opposed to coming to a two-foot jump stop in the paint. Indeed. As that turnover could provide to be costly for Coppin State. Poor pass to Hutton, and that goes out of bounds. So, again, another one of those situations to where back-to-back -back turnovers for both teams. And, and it's just unnecessary. And, and if you're the Bison, you have to understand that the game is not over yet. You know, you, you have a lead, but this lead is – it can be cut into quite easily. It's about three possessions three that Coppin State would need to score to really get back in it. Open Richardson, corner three. No. Rebound Creek. There's a foul underneath off the ball, and that's going to go against Brooklyn Fort Davis. And, and Jalinda Sally, we talked about how she's six for eight from the line. That is her best free throw shooting game that she's had this season. Um, in, in past games against Penn State, she went one for four against Delaware State, one for three. And today, she's just been doing a, a great job, definitely upping that percentage. And she has her career high, or season high, excuse me, in points against the Bison right now. And, and, and like we said, that double-double, Sally has secured it. Secured it indeed. She's played tremendous in this ball game. 13 points, 11 rebounds. It's going to be a timeout with 313 remaining in the fourth quarter. Howard up 56 to 48 over Coppin State. We'll be back on the Bison Sports Network after this. A rather short break. 310 and counting remaining in this fourth quarter. And Coppin State trying to apply some pressure. And they call 10 seconds, Takira. Oh, wow. I guess Ayanna Warren didn't get it over. So, again, a, another possession, no shot up for the Bison, just a straight turnover, and, and Coppin State retrieves the basketball. And when you talk about no shot opportunities, see, that's something that Coach Grace men mentioned yesterday is because they, they didn't shoot the ball entirely well, but they cut down on the turnovers. And she said, I'd rather have missed shots than missed opportunities. That was just an example of a missed opportunity. 
truly because you're not even giving your team a chance to score with an unforced error such as that. And, and that was just Ayanna Warren not being aware. But then again, another turnover just coughing the ball right back up to the Bison. So both teams are struggling with this. Coppin State up to 18 turnovers in this ball game. Here's Manette as they double Marsh down low. Creek drives baseline, gets battered away, and that's a turnover. Lawson, a three, and she hits the deck. Warren driving strong. Oh, man. And Sally, her, her, her afternoon is going to come to an end as well. I think that they actually caught it on Hope Evans. Oh, okay. I thought I thought that was on Sally. I think Hope may have gotten her with the body down low. Well, in, in that case, that's that's great for the Eagles because Sally has definitely been doing her thing. Warren first free throw. First free throw comes in and out. 54% as a team from the free throw line. You just don't expect that from the Howard Bison. No, not at all. And, and you know, it's, it's a little unfortunate because, like we said, the game could be way out of reach had they just knocked in these free throws. Really uncharacteristic of them. But at the same time, another turnover. Coach Laura Harper, she's she's walking down the, the sideline. Like, like, what more can I do? And she's, she's going to call a timeout. A timeout indeed, 59-48. two oh six remaining in the fourth quarter. This Coppin State's going to inbound it, and they get it to Aaliyah Lawson. And another turnover. Poor pass. Good hands by the Bison. Gia Thorpe driving. Shoots it, and Sally gets the rebound. Now, I don't know what Coach Laura Harper does for, for turnovers, but our coach used to make us run a lot. So you, you would hope that Coffin State that don't have to pay for all these turnovers in this game, and more so maybe it will be a teaching and a learning lesson. But, man, they, they've, they've coughed the basketball up so much. They have, and, you know, to your point, Takira, I could only imagine the frustration, especially after you come out of a timeout to turn the ball over and not even get up a shot opportunity after you draw, which you, I'm sure is going to think is a brilliant play to get two or three points. Yeah, so, so we'll see this time down if they can even get it across the timeline. A collision as Warren tried to get the steal. She collided with Lawson, and they're going to call a foul against Warren which is going to result in two shots for Lawson. One minute and 24 seconds left in this fourth quarter. Howard up by 11, 59-48. We'll see if Coffin State can cut into that lead. And First free throw's good. The second of a pair is up and good. And Ty, you, you brought up another good point earlier about how they're going to do the offense defense for Lawson because of those four fouls. Yeah, absolutely. I'm actually impressed that she, she hasn't fouled out in this game. She started being a little bit smarter because she had three early. And that's just beautiful basketball. Oh, but Chrislyn Marsh, she misses the, the layup, the easy lay lay. The Lele. I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> Richardson left it short. 60 seconds. 
Nice idea from Warren. And, you and you know, I was going to say, I wonder if Coppin State is thinking about fouling, but if, if the Bison are going to turn the basketball over, you know, not really a need to foul right there. Uh, if anything, you know, I felt, you know, the Bison thought that they had an easy layup opportunity, but, but bring it back and bring the ball back out. And, you know, you can kind of use some clock. You have a nine-point lead with under a minute left. A foul by Gia Thorpe as Evans tried to get out of trouble. We've seen a combined 37 turnovers in this ball game, 20 for Coppin State, 17 for Howard. Yeah, that's rough. That means, Zay, at some point in the game, we were watching nothing but turnovers. So <laughs> hopefully both these teams can get that together in the thick of conference play. First free throw won't go. And the thick also, too, of what's not going to be an easy season this year, obviously dealing with the pandemic and with COVID-19, but something that you touched on yesterday with these back-to-back -back matchups, those aren't easy games to necessarily come in and win because of the attention to detail and the focus and the familiarity with seeing one another on back-to-back -back days. Yeah, you hit the nail right on the head with that explanation a lot of teams around the nation are, are doing this back-to-back -back schedule where they'll, they'll play a team perhaps on a Thursday and you see that same team on Friday in this instance the MEAC they're doing a Saturday Sunday scheduling and Dixon may have gotten away with a double nonetheless Howard retains possession Warren hits the deck You know, Ty, I've always found it that one of the funniest things in basketball is that the final minute or a final couple of seconds typically takes a while. <laughs> yeah, they, they usually take the longest, especially when, when the fouling game comes into play or if there's a lot of stoppage like we've, we've seen today. One first free throw up and in. Ayanna Warren with five, with six points in this ball game, looking for her seventh. Shot is up. Won't go. Sally with the board. Sally has just had a monster games on the boards. I keep alluding to that, but if she keeps up this type of play for Coppin State, uh, things will look good for her. As that's a no call right there. Bison are able to track it down, get it into point guard's hands. Uh, and Coppin State, they're opting to not foul. Smart decision at this point, so... The Bison will come away with this back-to-back -back win, their first win in the back-to-back -back scenario of the season, beating a team twice in a row. Indeed, that is true. They're going to walk away with a 60-51 to victory. They have yet to lose at home. They play really, really well in Bird Gymnasium. As the buzzer sounds. And, and the final match, and the final score is 60-51. to the leading scorer for Howard was Anjane Hutton with 19 points. And Tykira, I do want to thank you for being a part of this broadcast with me. You've honestly been tremendous, and I've had a blast doing it with you. My guy, for sure. We'll see you guys next time. We had a great broadcast yet again with Xavier Wary. Indeed. So for Takira Carter, I'm Xavier Wary. The final score is 60 to 51. Howard beats Coppin State in the back-to-back. -back. See you all next time on the Bison Sports Network.